In this simple demo, I will show you how uh, Kubernetes service accounts and Kubernetes RBAC rules can be used to authenticate uh, and authorize Kafka applications. As you can see, I have already my Streamzy Kafka cluster deployed here in my Minikube, but it's not a regular Kafka cluster. It's uh, slightly modified. As you can see, I uh, configured here the authentication and I used new type Kubernetes SA, which is not uh, supported uh, in uh, Streamzy by default. And uh, it will do the authentication using the Kubernetes service accounts. And I also configured the authorization to something I called Kubernetes RBAC, which will do the authorization using the Kubernetes RBAC rules. And uh, otherwise, this is completely regular Kafka Streamzy deployment, Streamzy Kafka deployment. So, how does this work? The service account in Kubernetes they use for authentication a beer token, which uh, is basically very similar to the OAuth beer tokens, uh, which are used by the SASL OAuth beer mechanism. And that's why I created a simple project which provides the uh, all out uh, handlers uh, which uh, will use the token to uh, authenticate so uh, on the client side the login callback handler will uh, by default basically just read it from the default location inside the pod and uh, on the server side the uh, validator callback will uh, validate it using the token review feature of the kubernetes uh, api server uh, and uh, for authorization, I created a simple authorizer which uh, will take the user who is authenticated and it will basically use the subject uh, access review uh, service of the Kubernetes API server to see whether the user which is logged into Kafka using the service account has or doesn't have some RBAC rights. And I have this mapping between the different uh, objects uh, in Kafka and the different actions. And I map them uh, to uh, specific RBAC actions and RBAC objects. So for example, the actions which are about the whole Kafka cluster, I map them into the Kafka uh, custom resource which deploys the cluster. And for the topics, I map them against the Kafka topics. This mapping is not perfect. As you can see, for example, I don't distinguish between the alter, alter configs, cluster action, and so on events. I just map all of them into the patch uh, verb in the Kubernetes RBAC. I also don't really support the delegation tokens right now. And uh, for the group and transactional IDs, I really just uh, verify that the transaction ID or the group is starting with the identity of the user because we don't have any Kafka group or Kafka transactional ID uh, groups right now. So that's how the authorizer works. So uh, let's have a look at uh, how it works. I have here some very simple deployments of my Kafka clients. Uh, first I create the Kafka topic with some configuration. But then I create a new service account for the Kafka producer. I create a Kafka producer role. The role gets uh, the right to list and update uh, Kafka topics, and specifically a Kafka topic called uh, Kafka test apps, which is what I created uh, here. And uh, I will also bind the new role which I just created to the service account which I created. And then I will use it in my deployment of my regular Kafka producer. And uh, I will do the same for the consumer. Uh, you see the producer had the uh, list and update rights. And the consumer has the list and get rights because it will be consuming the messages, reading them, not writing them. But otherwise the same. And the really important thing is that I assign this service account to the pod so that it gets the right token and that it can authenticate. So let's do kubectl apply clients. That should create all these resources and get us started with the pods. 
so the Kubernetes dashboard has an auto refresh, but they seem to be already running. So let's have a look at the producer. And uh, we can see that it's running and sending uh, messages. It sends a message uh, per second. And we can also have a look at the consumer, which uh, is uh, receiving these messages. So this seems to work fine. And just to prove that this whole thing uh, is actually working, I uh, have here a different example, which is another deployment. This deployment uh, will use the default uh, service account, so it will have a token. And because uh, the default service account is a valid service account, it will actually successfully authenticate. But because it doesn't use the Kafka producer service account and role, it will not have the rights to actually read uh, the uh, write to the topic we are using. And I have here another deployment for the con consumer. In this case, because uh, normally the service account tokens are of course valid when you get them from running pop, I injected manually a token uh, from a different cluster which should not be valid and this pod should get uh, authentication error. So kubectl apply denied. Let's uh, have a look at our pods and we can see that unauthorized one is already running and we can see that it's trying to it authenticate it but when it tries to access the topic it gets uh, topic authorization failed error. And uh, Let's check the unauthenticated one as well. And here, because we injected the invalid token, we will see the authorization failed with uh, authentication failed with uh, status uh, invalid token because the token is invalid. So uh, with this, you can see that uh, it's not so complicated to implement uh, service account based authentication and authorization for Kafka. And uh, if you think this is something what streams should support, then uh, let us know. Thanks for watching.